and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving Leap Code Problem 314, Binary Tree Vertical Order Traversal. Let's read the question prompt. Given the root of a binary tree, return the vertical order traversal of its nodes' values, i.e. from top to bottom, column by column. If two nodes are in the same row and column, the order should be from left to right. So if we're given this binary tree here, the answer that we want to return is going to be what? So the first column is going to be 9. Um, so that's going to be 1. And then the second column is going to be 3, 15. And then the last, uh, the next column is going to be 20. And then we have one more column, <coughs> 7 here. So basically, we want to return all the values in each of the columns. So let's see how they got this solution. Well, we can see that this is one column. And remember, we want to go from left to right. So we can see that this is one column here. This is another column. This is another column. And this is another column. But how exactly are we supposed to solve this question? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to be smart here. Let's pretend that the root can be considered as the coordinate 0, 0. So if this is 0, 0, then when we go to the left, what are we doing? We're moving the x coordinate to the left by 1, and we're going to be increasing our y coordinate by minus 1. So this can be considered the coordinate minus 1, minus 1. Cool. So to go to the 20, what do we do? Well, we move our x coordinate by 1, and we also decrease the y coordinate by 1. So this coordinate can be considered as minus one, oh, sorry, one and minus one. <clears throat> so now nine doesn't have any children, so we don't need to explore any further, but 20 does. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you know, figure out the coordinate of this 15. Well, remember going to the left, we subtract one from the x coordinate. So this then becomes zero and its y coordinate is going to be minus two since we've moved down another level and in this problem the y coordinate doesn't matter there's actually another leak code problem which is basically the exact same thing where you're going to use the y coordinates to sort your values but in this particular question the y coordinate doesn't matter so all we care about is really the x coordinates now for the seven, again, when we go to the right, we increment the x coordinate by one. So this can be thought of as what? Uh, two and you know minus two. So that's the coordinate. Now we can start to see that we can group things based on the x coordinate, right? And if we did that and we maintain some sort of map where the key was the x coordinate. So all the points that start with zero, let's store them in a list. And we're going to say, OK, we have this value three here, because that's at you know, when x is zero, we have three. And then we have, you know, 15. And then we have, OK, minus one. And then we have, uh, OK, so that's that value nine. And then at the coordinate one, we have what? We have the 20. Um, we have 20 here. And then at the coordinate two for x, we have, you know, nine. Uh, sorry, seven. It should be seven. Okay, cool. But, you know, this isn't in the correct order. Remember that we want to return our answer from left to right. So what we want to do is, you know, all those values will be in our dictionary here. And what we want to do is we want to return the values from left to right, but we have to keep track of what, you know, the leftmost column is and then the rightmost. And then we can go through our dictionary and basically pull the values out so they'll be in the correct order. So if we somehow knew that minus one was the leftmost column and then minus two, uh, sorry, two is the rightmost column, we could iterate through, you know, the range from minus one to two and extract our values. That way, you know, we get minus one, so we'd see the nine, which is the first thing. Then, you know, what's next? Zero, so we see three, 15, and then one, we see this 20, and then two, we see the seven. So we'll have to keep track of what the minimum, you know, x column is and the maximum is. So that way we can iterate through our dictionary here, which is storing the values, and we're gonna be populating this dictionary as we go along. So this is the general approach that we wanna solve. 
uh, that we want to use to solve this problem. Now let's take it to the code editor and I'll show you how to actually implement this and solve the problem. Okay, we've gone over the explanation as to how we might solve the problem, but let's actually write the code and hopefully things will be quite clear on how you're going to solve this problem. The first thing that we want to do for pretty much any tree based question is to handle the base case. And basically that is what happens when the root is null. Here, we see that we want to return a list of lists as our result. So that means if the root is null, we should just return an empty list. So we're going to say, if not root, we're simply going to return an empty list. Now we need to define the data structure that will actually hold our result. Remember from the diagram, we were using a map where the key was the column and the values was a list of the node values for every node in that column. So let's define that. So we're going to say level, actually, we're going to say column items equals to um, collections dot default dict. And we're going to use a list here. Cool. So we've defined our map data structure where the key will be, you know, the, the column number, and then the value will be a list of items, which is basically where we're using this list for in the default dictionary. Now to do this traversal, we need to touch every single node in the tree. And we're going to use a level order traversal here. Uh, although, you know, we're not really going to be iterating through level by level, we just need to touch every node. So this, I guess, should just be, you know, standard breadth first search through the tree. So we're going to use a queue here. So let's define our queue data structure. So we're going to say, I'm going to define a double ended queue here, and we're going to assign it with what we don't want to just put the root in here. If we were doing a breadth first search, remember that we need to keep track of our column position. So we know how to populate our column items dictionary. So let's instantiate it instead with a tuple. And the first item is going to represent the x coordinate of our current node that we're working with. And then we're going to put the node in there. Remember that we start assuming that the root is going to be the coordinate zero, zero. And every time we move to the left subtree, it would be equivalent to subtracting one from the X coordinate and also subtracting one from the Y coordinate, right? Cause we're moving to the left one and we're moving down one with the Y. This problem in particular is the medium version of this question where you actually don't need to worry about the Y coordinate. There is a lead code question that you do need to take into consideration the Y position of each column value. But for this one, we don't need it. So we're not going to worry about defining a variable for that. We're just going to worry about the X's because that's all we care about. So we have that. And then we also need a data structure to hold our result. So we're going to define a list here to store the result. We're going to do a standard breadth first search. So we're going to say while Q, we're going to say the X coordinate and the node that we're working with is going to be whatever we pop from the front of the queue. So we're going to pop left from the queue and we're going to say column, column items, and I can't spell today, column items for that X, we're going to append to the list of values for that column, the node.val. Cool. Now what we need to do is we need to check whether or not our current node has left or right children. So we're going to say if node.left, then we need to append to the queue the left child and we need to tell what its position is. Since we're going to the left, we said that that would be the equivalent of subtracting one from the x. So we're going to say x minus one and we're going to put node.left. And we're going to do the same thing for right. So we're going to say if node.right, we're going to say queue.append and we're going to put x plus one because remember moving to the right is x plus one. Um, in terms of the coordinates, and we're going to put node.write. Cool. What we want to do here is go through the entirety of our tree. And actually, there's one thing that I forgot that I should mention now. Remember how I said we need to iterate through our column items map to basically return the answer from left to right. And the way that we were going to do that is we were actually going to track the value of the minimum uh, x column we've seen and the maximum x column, and then we were going to iterate for in that range. So to do that, we actually need to maintain what the minimum is and the maximum is. So we're going to say min x is going to be float infinity. And we're going to say max x is going to be float negative infinity. 
And then here, after we've appended the values, we can simply say min x is going to be the minimum of the current minimum x and x. And we're going to say max x equals the maximum of max x and x. So that way, we'll always have this min and max x available to us for the next step. So once this while loop ends, we know that we finished the breadth first search and we basically populated our column items. But now it's time to return the answer in the way that we want it, which remember is from left to right in the column. So it should be 9, 3, 15, 20, and then 7. So let's do that. We're going to say for level in range from min x to max x plus 1. And remember, it's plus 1 because ranges are not inclusive at the endpoint. So we need to use that last endpoint. So we need to do plus one on the end. Um, what we're going to do is we're simply going to say res.append. We're going to extract from column items whatever the values for that column is. Um, let's see, column items of level. And we're going to append it to our result. And at the end, all we need to do is simply return our result. Let's submit this and double check that it's going to work. And it does. Cool. So let's talk about the time and space complexity. So we are performing a breadth first search through our tree, which means that we need to visit every single node and we need to do some operations here. None of these operations are anything but constant time operations. So that means that our entire time complexity can be summarized as big O of n because we need to go through the entire. Um, tree here, touch every node and then, you know, update column items. But that happens in constant time. So we're not adding any extra, you know, space here at uh, time. Sorry. Uh, so it's going to be big O of n on the time space wise. We need to basically store all the values of our tree in this column items. Um, so at the end, you know, this is going to be a big O of n operation because we're going to end up storing all the values of our tree and nothing more. So Time wise, it's going to be big O of n and space wise, it's going to be big O of n. And that's how you solve binary tree vertical order traversal. This is the first of two questions on leak code that does um, this exact same thing. The second question does take into account the y coordinate. This question does not. So for that question, which I should have a video for sometime soon, uh, we will be solving it and actually taking into account the y coordinate. There is a little bit more nuance to the solution uh, and it is a little bit more complicated. But for this one, luckily, it's quite straightforward and pretty easy to solve once you see that you need to basically treat the root as coordinate zero, zero, and then going to the left is, you know, subtracting one from the X and then going to the right is adding one to the X. And that way you can group your columns by that X uh, coordinate and that will give you the columns. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and check out my other videos if you're preparing for an on-site interview. Happy coding.